from Kashmir to Kanyakumari, India is a spellbinding mosaic of culture, tradition, languages and an extraordinary mingling civilization. Keeping its age-old culture maintained, today the country is taking huge strides on the path of development. Hello, I'm your host Pratiksha and today in our episode of My India, we bring you some of these stories that will offer you a glimpse into India's culture, diversity and the developments happening in and around the world. From the intricate details of a sari to the bold patterns of a rug, each handloom textile is a work of art that tells a story. A story that traces its root back to the era of the freedom movement for Swadeshi textiles. Today, in our show, we will provide you with a glimpse of the nostalgic cultural legacy of India's handloom art form, which celebrated its ninth edition of National Handloom Day recently, featuring a variety of fashion events and exhibition that left the spectators in wonder. Let's have a look. The manual weaving of intricate embroidery on the fabric surface, characterized by fine needlework using colourful threads, has a significant history dating back to the Swadeshi movement in 1906. The journey of exotic handloom textiles began during the British era by Bal Gangadhar Tilak, Bipin Chandrapal and Lala Lajpat Rai from West Bengal's Calcutta. Today, the vibrant traditional handloom textile holds a special pride on the world stage for its potential to dominate the global market with its eccentric and unique design patterns. On the occasion of the 9th edition of National Handloom Day, which is observed on the 7th of August every year, many states hosted handloom exhibitions and fashion shows across the country with the support of the administration and local NGOs. साथियों ये भी दुर्भाग्य रहा कि जो वस्त्र उद्योग पिछली शताब्दियों में इतना ताकतवर था उसे आजादी के बाद फिर से सशक्त करने पर उतना जोर नहीं दिया गया हालत तो ये थी कि खादी को भी मरना सन्न स्थिति में छोड़ दिया गया था लोग खादी पहनने वालों को हीन भावना से देखने लगे थे 2014 के बाद से हमारी सरकार इस स्थिति और इस सोच को बदलने में जुटी है The exhibition was a government effort aimed at revitalizing the dying traditional craftsmanship and encouraging the weaving community. It provided them with a platform to showcase their unique creations to the world. Over time, the manufacturing and production capacity of the handloom industry have improved significantly, leading to a large number of artisans engaging in craftsmanship across different corners of the country. Today, more than 35 lakh artisans of which 25 lakhs are females are supported by the handloom industry. These artisans weave to produce high quality and sustainable fabrics. If you look at its history, it was in 1905. In 1905, when in our country, we wanted to get a lot of food, which was Gandhi's idea that we wanted to get a lot of food, which was our 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 food, अगस्त है ये जो नेशनल हैंडलूम डे है यहाँ पे आज दो तक जीवन लगी एक हैंडलूम के ऊपर थी एक जीवन एक हैंडीक्राफ्ट की प्रोडक्ट के ऊपर थी और उसके ऊपर एक क्या था एक फैशन शो ऑर्गेनाइज किया गया था फैशन शो का मोटिव ये था कि 
जो आज की डेट में जो पहनावा आ गया तो उसको हम उनके साथ कम्पीट कर सकें कम्पीट कैसे फ्यूजन कर कुछ नया डाल के तो वो बीवर को हम प्रमोट कर सकें ताकि उनको एक प्लेटफॉर्म दे सकें ताकि वो बीवर आगे जाए अगर जो प्रोडक्ट हम बेच रहे हैं या कोई हैंडी या हैंडलूम का उसमें अगर ऑथेंटिसिटी हो तभी तो वो ग्लोबल मार्केट में कम्पीट करेगा तो हम चाहते जो हिम क्राफ्ट एक ब्रांड है हम इसको एक ब्रांड के लिए नाम से जाने जाए ताकि पूरे वर्ल्ड में The vibrant and exotic festivity of handloom became a celebration of India's rich legacy of handwoven textiles and the indomitable spirit of the traditional weaving community. They have been instrumental in preserving India's age-old heritage while also contributing to socio-economic progress. During the exhibition, the artisans showcased a variety of indigenous handwoven and handicraft products. simultaneously raising awareness among visitors about the historical and cultural significance of their creations the visitors would stop by each stall to admire and praise their creativity यहाँ पे आपको सर देखने को मिलेगा जैसे यहाँ सामने आप देख सकते हो हिम कॉस्ट का वो जो ऑर्गेनिक चीज़ें हैं जैसे चाय पत्ती हो गई हैंडलूम हैंडीक्राफ्ट के जो भी शॉल बनते हैं स्काफ बनते हैं मफलर बनते हैं टोकरियाँ हो गई और हमारे स्टोर में स्पेशली आपको देखने को मिलेगा चंबा रुमाल और मेटल आर्ट जो कि मंडी का फेमस है As a part of the handloom exhibition, a fashion show was also organized in Shimla to attract people, particularly the youth, towards choosing Swadeshi indigenous clothing while also expressing support for local artisans. The public display of traditional and fusion clothes during the festivity of fashion showcased unconventional patterns and designs worn by models representing various regions of Himachal Pradesh. इसमें टोटल पैंतीस मॉडल्स हैं और सब हम तीन राउंड्स में कर रहे हैं हम अपने ट्रेडिशनल कॉस्ट्यूम्स प्लस फ्यूजन कॉस्ट्यूम्स और फिनाले राउंड और सभी मॉडल्स जैसे हम कुछ सेवन डिस्ट्रिक्ट्स का चंबा किन्नौर लाहौल स्पिति मंडी इनका हम ट्रेडिशनल कॉस्ट्यूम्स डिस्प्ले कर रहे हैं फिर फ्यूजन राउंड में हमने इनको हमारे इनोवेटिव वे में राउंड्स को थोड़ा हिमाचली टच दे और उनको रिप्रजेंट करने की कोशिश की है जो आज की जनरेशन को बहुत पसंद आएगा The intricate craftsmanship displayed by India's handloom artisans offers just a glimpse into the vast vibrant cultural heritage of the country. Events like these are essential to bring attention to the importance of these traditional art forms. They also provide a platform for artisans to share their work with the world and receive fair compensation for their skills. So next time you come across any such exhibition remember to take a moment to appreciate and admire their incredible creations A timeless tradition of ethics and unity thrives in India the land of Sufi mystics and revered saints Today in this episode of My India we take you to the Dargah of Baba Hazrat Peer the holy shrine nestled in Vadodara city of the country's western state of Gujarat From fascinating custom of offering clocks by devotees to its architectural impressiveness the shrine has served as a symbol of peace and harmony for decades let's have a look For centuries the dargah of Sufi saints has stood as a beacon beckoning seekers of solace and inner tranquility The shrine holds equal reverence among people of all communities The Dargah of Baba Hazrat Peer also referred to as Ghadiali Baba on the stretch of the Mumbai Delhi highway near Vadodara in Poicha village is a glowing example of such religious integrity. What sets this place apart from the rest is its custodianship. A Hindu family has unfailingly safeguarded this Muslim shrine for 5 centuries. This unique characteristic of this place draws people from all walks of life. who come here to offer their heartfelt tributes inko malum hai ki ye se mere kismat kar sakte hai dil se iske liye chune mere ko kya udhi nahi boli ke karodo dana bichao usme to ek chun lete hai kya ab mere piche 
कोई हमारे घर से चुनेंगे कोई छोटे बच्चे को बरोबर है जब तक मेरी उम्र है जब तक चलते रहता है इस सिलसिले घड़ी स्कूल में देते बरोबर है मदरसा में देते कोई समूह लगन में हुए वहाँ देते हैं और कोई बोलता है बरकत के लिए घड़ी दो फिर दस पंद्रह रुपये बीस पच्चीस रुपये पेटी में डालते हैं तो घड़ी ले जाते हैं बरकत के लिए हिंदू मुस्लिम सब ले जाते हिंदू के भी आती और मोमिटिन के भी आते देना पड़ता है क्या Countless clocks grace the main space of the darga. These are the offerings of devotees who believe in the fortune they bring along with chadar. This is a place where diverse backgrounds, differences blur, and Hindus, Muslims, Sikhs, and Christians converge and bow their heads in unison and seek blessed lives. I'm a lot of years here, and when Baba does karam, when the bell rings, then we come and pray. और जो भी दुआ मांगते हैं इन उनके कर्म से वो तो सब दुआ कबूल होती है इधर हिंदू मुस्लिम में कोई फ़र्क नहीं होता मुस्लिम से ज़्यादा हिंदू लोग आते हैं और मेरी सोच यही है कि हमारे यहाँ हिंदू मुस्लिम में कभी फ़र्क ही नहीं करना चाहिए इस्लाम भी ऐसा ही सिखा रहा है कि हिंदू मुस्लिम में कभी फ़र्क मत किया करो जो भी आदमी फ़र्क करेगा समझो वो चला जाएगा क्योंकि आप आपस में रहोगे साथ मिलकर तो देश अपना अपने आप आगे बढ़ेगा मेरे बच्चे को तकलीफ थी मेरे बहन का मेरी भतीजी है उसके बच्चों को तकलीफ थी मैंने यहाँ से गुजरा था सरकार में अरेस्ट की थी कि सरकार में आऊँगा तो आपके दरबार में हाजिरी करा दूँगा तो मेरी तमन्ना पूरी हो मेरा बच्चा खैरियत से अभी खेलता कूदता हो गया फॉर सेंचुरीज सूफिज्म बिन अ टाइमलेस फोर्स दैट हैज वोवन अनवेवरिंग कनेक्शन बिटवीन कम्युनिटीज एंड हैज नर्चर्ड हार्मनी एंड ब्रदरहुड Passed down through generations, the legacy continues its mission to craft a better world even today. And now, a roundup of some of the major stories that made news recently. Prime Minister Narendra Modi laid the foundation stone for the redevelopment of 508 stations on August 6th via video conferencing. Indian Prime Minister has emphasized the importance of providing world class amenities at railway stations. The Amrit Bharat station scheme was launched to redevelop 1309 stations. The redevelopment of 508 railway stations will be done at a cost of more than 24470 crore rupees. Master plans are being prepared for the development of these stations as city centers with proper integration of both sides of the city. The integrated approach is driven by the holistic vision of the overall urban development of the city. These 508 stations are spread across 27 states and UTs, including 55 each in UP and Rajasthan, among others. The redevelopment will provide modern passenger amenities along with ensuring well-designed traffic circulation. The design of the station buildings will be inspired by local culture, heritage, and architecture. Jammu and Kashmir Srinagar is decked up to celebrate India's 77th Independence Day. The Indian national flag was flying high at the iconic Ghanta Ghar in Srinagar's Lal Chowk. The famous clock tower in the heart of the city was renovated recently under the Srinagar Smart City project. The Ghanta Ghar has been a landmark for generations deriving its name from Moscow's Red Square. Athar Amir Khan, chief executive officer of the Srinagar Smart City project, said the hoisting of the national flag was a historic moment for the city. Ghanta Ghar and Lal Chowk are very iconic places that are being decorated by Tiranga under the Azadi Ka Amrit Mahotsav campaign. Several places across the city and the Union territory are being decorated as people are celebrating the Azadi Ka Amrit Mahotsav by taking out the Tiranga rallies. The new clock tower has come up in the capital Srinagar Lal Chowk under the Srinagar Smart City Limited project. In the valley, security has been beefed up to prevent any unfortunate incidents before the festivities. The Karen sector along the line of control has emerged as a new destination for tourists in the Kupwada district of North Kashmir. This place is seeing a huge rush of people. They are staying in tents 
and availing the facilities of homestays in the area with the help of Indian Army and the administration. Visitors are also exploring the regions near border areas offering unique cultural and geographical experiences. Notably, people are visiting Tithwal, Machil and Keren of the Kupwada districts. For the last two years, the Indian Army and the administration are making all-out efforts to bring the Kupwada district and areas like Keren, Tithwal and others on the tourism map of the Union Territory. The Jammu and Kashmir administration is trying to develop new tourist destinations and Keren and Tithwal are among them. Earlier, these areas were famous for cross-border shelling and infiltrations and now people are visiting these places as peace is returning in these areas. Now locals are happy with the new development in the region and are very thankful to the authorities. Moving on to the southern state, Kerala, the enchanting land often referred to as God's own country. Nestled within the picturesque Malarical region lies the village of Kotayam, where nature's canvas unfolds in a spectacular flower festival. What was once a local treasure, this floral marvel gained global recognition when visitors shared its beauty on social media in 2019. As the sun rises, tourists embark on boat rides and wander along the riverbanks, capturing the moment on the delicate pink carpet, a serenity-filled experience. Join us as we explore all dimensions of this festival. Kerala, renowned for its mix of cultures and religious diversity, is often called God's own country for its mesmerizing beauty. To catch a glimpse of its uniqueness, a large number of people throng the flower festival in Kotayam village of Malarikal region in Kerala. They all witness the stunning view of the seasonal blooming of pink and white water lilies. The blooming of water lilies was a common occurrence for the natives of Kotayam until 2019 when some visitors shared pictures on social media which drew widespread attention and appreciation. This year, the unique festival of Kotayam village would last a month and a half until September 10. We have come here to see this wonderful Lotus Fest. It's so beautiful. It's just amazing to see so much of, so many of flowers, so colorful. I do wish everybody come here and see this place. It's just mesmerizing to see. The water lilies or Ambala in Malayalam are spread over 600 acres of paddy fields out of a total of 1,800 acres and they create a scenic spectacle these days. The best time to witness them is in the morning from 6 a.m. to 9 a.m. as the flowers wither by noon. During the boat rides and on the banks of the paddy fields, the tourists snap selfies and enjoyed photo shoots on the pink carpet of water lilies, immersing themselves in serenity. The Kerala Tourism Department, District Administration and local bodies collaborated to present this unique display of floriculture during the monsoon season. With the upcoming Onam festival, locals expect an even larger influx of tourists as the region has hosted over 80,000 visitors in previous years. It was a very lovely experience. The boat ride was very scenic and the wild water lilies are in bloom. I would recommend not plucking too many to preserve the wildlife. There's cranes and the weather was very nice. The Ambala festival, popularly known as the Water Lily Festival of Kerala, showcases India's rich natural heritage with a number of other unexplored regions waiting to be discovered. And now, we bring you some of these stories from the recent developments and happenings from around the world in our section of World in Focus. People trying virtual reality workout training sessions organized by Volkairi Industries. The metaverse just got real with a combination of an immersive VR workout and electro-muscle stimulation or EMS that makes your brain think you are actually lifting those weights. Volkairi Industries, a UK-based tech startup, is using its patented wearable technology 
to bring the gym equipment and fitness trainer to you wherever you are. The immersive virtual reality training is Valkyrie's fitness program that allows users to take part in virtual gym classes led by coaches in the metaverse using VR and haptic armbands to deliver EMS pulses to the biceps and triceps muscles. The armbands allow you to feel feedback stimulation on your arm according to your movements, with the intensity changing depending on how strongly you pull a virtual elastic band, how quickly you lift a virtual dumbbell or how hard you hit a virtual punching bag. The company says a little as 15 minutes every two days can bring noticeable benefits without the bulky equipment of other home setups. Research from global sports science institutions has shown that EMS increases muscle mass and thickness as well as the strength and overall cardiovascular fitness. A gym in East Jerusalem now targets children with activities exclusively tailored for young ages encouraging them to be more active and spend less time motionless on screens. Providing alternatives to children using screens during their downtime, trainer Ahmad Abul Hawa created exercise programs that can keep them busy but also promote physical and mental well-being for Palestinian children in Jerusalem. His classes involve children aged 9 to 15 where they perform a number of functional movements. He also aims to spread awareness about the importance of having a healthy diet as an essential part of overall wellness. With other specific sports activities available in the east side of the city such as basketball and football clubs, gyms for children are not very common and many youngsters are turning to fitness classes at Hawa Studio. Abul Hawa aspires to not only improve kids' physical health but to also create a place for Palestinian children to develop strength and friendship. Now we'll take you to the Mapping Tibet exhibition which has been garnering a lot of appreciation lately for its display of 42 maps. These maps serve as a reminder of the historical significance of Tibet by showcasing geographical locations along with their names. The public exhibition took place in the picturesque town of Dharamshala in the Himalayan region of Himachal Pradesh. It became accessible to the public following its official inauguration by Norzin Dolma the Minister of the Department of Information and International Relations of the Tibetan government in exile. An exhibition titled Mapping Tibet commenced at the Tibet Museum in North Indian hill town of Himachal Pradesh, Dharamshala. The 42 maps were displayed showcasing the historic boundaries of Tibet since the 17th century and its political relationships with the neighbouring countries. Norzin Dolma, Minister of the Department of Information and International Relations of the Tibetan government in exile, inaugurated the exhibition. I think this, these maps tell a story about how Tibet was mapped by different uh, uh, mapping agencies over time and so that people will understand the how Tibet mapping was evolved over the time. So that's, that's the whole idea here. And also at the same time, we want the general public to understand what Tibet is and how the mapping of Tibet was evolved over time so that they can have a better understanding and appreciation. The mapping of Tibet, according to the modern cartography system, was mostly published by either Westerners or Chinese until the Shimla Convention of 1914. The Gade Fortran government for the first time made an effort to participate in the demarcation of Tibetan territories. Tibet's map was published by Western countries in the 17th and 18th centuries based on information obtained from Jesuit missionaries and travellers' accounts. It is uh, one part of our uh, curriculum, 
So uh, usually we have a temporary exhibition which stays in this temporary uh, place for around two and three months. Uh, so every two and three months we change the, uh, the topic uh, pertaining to the Tibetan struggle, Tibetan history. So right now what you see is the uh, 42 curated map uh, through which we try to narrate the uh, you know, uh, decolonized version of Tibet history. After the establishment of the Tibetan government in exile in Dharamshala, various institutions and individuals made numerous attempts to standardize the Tibetan map. These maps focus on understanding cultural and geographical feature names in the Tibetan language to retain the true identity of the Tibetan places. That's all we have for you this week. Your comments and suggestions are important to us. Do give us your feedback at myindia at the rate anin.com. I'm your host Pratiksha and it's a goodbye from the entire production team.